Good day, ladies. So we're going to start looking at qualitative analysis. And in qualitative analysis, one of the features of qualitative, a qualitative sorry, analysis is that it is an analytical tool. And most of the tests that we will conduct will allow us to identify our substances. So in many cases, in this case, for example, we are looking at a salt. So we know it is a salt and it has both a cation and an anion. And we're testing using different reagents that will all produce a precipitate or not with the cation. So based on the color changes that we might see or the formation of a precipitate, we will then be able to make inferences about what is contained in our salt and then we are going to be able to identify it after we've eliminated all of the possibilities. So the first thing we're going to do is make a preliminary observation. And our preliminary observation is really just looking first up at what our salt or our solution might look like. And based on our preliminary observations, we may be able to make some initial inferences. These are what we describe as colorless solutions. Please make note, I'm not saying that it is, sorry, this is clear and it is colorless. It is clear because it is a solution, but it is colorless because there is no color. And we will see in another example that some of our solutions are colored. So I'm going to conduct a series of tests. I'm going to add aqueous ammonia. I'm going to add some sodium hydroxide. We're going to add some barium nitrate. We're going to add some silver nitrate. And one of the first inferences that we can make is that the salt is soluble. And that is very important because it means that we have an aqueous solution and the salt that was formed creates a colorless and clear solution which means that the salt is soluble. So for each of our tests, we typically use about two to three cubic centimeters of reagent. So as we go along, we will pause this video and we'll make some discussions and inferences um, about what we actually see in the lab. So our first test involves sodium hydroxide and sodium hydroxide is a colorless solution. And we're adding dropwise, but we're not going to make our inference saying dropwise. We're going to write a complete statement, and I'll discuss that in a bit. So we're paying attention to what happens. Give it a shake. So this is what happens when we add one or two drops of our sodium hydroxide. And what is our observation here? What are you seeing? So this is after a drop of or two of our sodium hydroxide. And I'm going to add my sodium hydroxide in excess. And it means in excess, I'm going to try to double the volume. Now, ideally, what I will do is I will throw out some of this precipitate so that I don't have too much mixture in my test tube because that can overflow my test tube and cause a problem. So I've reduced the amount somewhat and I'm going to add my sodium hydroxide in excess. making sure to shake in between. We've seen what has happened to our precipitate. So we will write that our precipitate has dissolved in excess sodium hydroxide. So dropwise, so when we added sodium hydroxide, we formed a, what did you see? 
And now the precipitate has dissolved and we've now formed a colorless solution. So next up, I will add some aqueous ammonia. Again, adding aqueous, drop, um, aqueous ammonia, one drop or two drops first, and then shake. And again, what are we seeing there? Shake. So I'm just gonna throw some off again. Still have some left, but I'm going to add some aqueous ammonia until it is in excess. So this is what happened after I added my aqueous ammonia in excess. How are we going to describe this observation? So both sodium hydroxide and aqueous ammonia allow us to test for the cation because what we have in sodium hydroxide and aqueous ammonia is the hydroxide ion that will form a reaction or will react with the cation to form or not form a precipitate. So those two tests, sodium hydroxide and aqueous ammonia, test for the cation. What we're gonna do next is look at the tests for the anions. And so there are two main tests that we look at and that will involve our silver and our barium ion because you should know by now what the solubility of certain barium salts are and what the solubility of certain, of certain silver salts are. So the silver nitrate looks for a specific type of anion and your barium nitrate looks for another set or another specific set of anions. So if you're not quite sure which anions are being looked for, take a minute, have a check in your textbook, and let's see which ones form, um, which ones are we looking for, what group of compounds are we looking for with the silver ion, and what group of compounds are we looking for when we use the barium ion. Okay, so here we go. I'm adding silver nitrate, and silver nitrate is stored in a dark bottle. Can anybody tell me why silver nitrate is stored in a dark colored bottle? Um, I will pause the video so you could answer. Right, so I'm adding silver nitrate, again, just as the other one, um, a few drops first, and then I'll give it a shake, and then I will have a look at what is happening. So we added silver nitrate and what is happening? What happened? Silver nitrate, we see that there is no observable change. We didn't form any precipitate. The reaction did not change color. The contents of the test tube did not give off a gas that we could see. The contents of the test tube did not give off any color change. There is no change in heat or temperature. And so with silver nitrate, there is no observable change or no observable reaction. Our last test is that of barium nitrate. And barium nitrate is a colorless solution. So when we add barium nitrate, we have in mind that we're looking for a particular type of anion. And so when we add barium nitrate, let's see what happens here. Just a bit. So, what is our observation here? What would we, what will, would we record when we add barium nitrate and see this happening? 
So I add some barium nitrate and I follow that typically with some dilute nitric acid. That's the test. It is barium nitrate followed by some dilute nitric acid. And on adding both of these things, what do I record as my observation? All right, so let's have a look at our next solution. So again, first thing we do is make some preliminary observations. And based on these preliminary observations, we can make some very simple inferences or very educated guesses. So what do you think we would, what are we going to record here as a preliminary observation? So we're gonna run through all of the same tests where we're going to have sodium hydroxide, aqueous ammonia, silver nitrate, and barium nitrate followed by dilute nitric acid. So the exact same test that we did previously, looking for the cation and looking for the anion using different tests. Okay, so we're going to have a look at our sodium hydroxide. One drop of sodium hydroxide. Give it a shake. Remember what it looked like before. So I'm giving this a shake. And we're seeing. Hopefully, y'all are seeing clearly. Now, what you all are seeing is a lot darker in color than what I am seeing in real life. But it is the nature of things. I'm going to throw off some of that precipitate because, again, I don't want too much in my test tube. And I'm now going to add some of my sodium hydroxide, which will be described in excess. So this is about enough excess. And what's happening? What happened with my precipitate? Again, we have an expectation because our preliminary observation gave us a lot of information, right? So check in with your textbook and see what we would describe this as. Next up, some aqueous ammonia. Again, what do you expect to see? Again, what you're seeing is a lot darker than what I am seeing in real life, but remember what it looked like at the start. Yes? All right. So now that was one or two drops, and now I'm going to add aqueous ammonia in excess. What am I seeing? Look at that. Compare that. Oops, I threw it out. Never mind. So what has happened here, this looks exactly as it does in real life, as it does on the camera what has happened to my precipitate, and how would I record that observation? So now we're looking for our anions. It's not so obvious what the anion would be in here, but it is certainly one that will form a soluble salt with the cation, because again, we have a solution, right? So my first test for my anions is my silver nitrate. And just remind me, what are we looking for when we add silver nitrate? What type of anions? So I'm adding silver nitrate just a little bit.
and what do I see? Does this follow any of the expected observations if the anion that is being looked for reacts with silver nitrate? So how would we record this observation? All right. Our last one is adding barium nitrate. Again, what types of compounds or what types of anions um, are we looking for when we add barium containing compound here? What kinds of observations are we expecting? So add a drop, add two drops. Now, look at what's going on in here. Again, remember what it looked like at the start. We had a, a, a clear mixture, a clear solution. Now, this is a little misleading because you would notice this and the way that it looks on camera, again, a lot darker than in real life, you may misrepresent this as a blue precipitate, but that's not what's happening in here. This is a white precipitate in a blue solution. Remember what's causing the blue color. That is not what's reacting with the barium nitrate. The anion is, uh, sorry, the cation is causing the blue color. The cation is not reacting with barium nitrate. The anion is. And that can only form, based on what we're knowing at this level, it can only form white precipitates, right? So this is actually forming a white precipitate in a blue solution. Don't say that this is a pale blue solution. If you see this because a barium does not react with anything to form a pale blue uh, precipitate. So we're adding um, some nitric acid now to what we're now seeing as a white precipitate formed. And if we add some nitric acid, are we going to, okay, let me just pour some of this off. Yep, just a little bit. Here we go. Has anything happened to my precipitate? Did my precipitate dissolve? No, it did not. And because my precipitate did not dissolve, I will record that the precipitate did not dissolve when my acid was added. So that ends our qualitative analysis. So we have our two um, salts that we've tested using our major tests. And we should have some idea of what we are working with at this point. All right, that's it.